Poor Natalie Motram has been crying. That's clear from her awkward mugshot. It's hard to blame her. She has a lot to answer for. At the time this photo was taken, Natalie was an intelligence analyst with British police, working on one of the most important and secretive penetrations of the global underworld elite. And she had just been caught, burning it all to the ground. While working as part of a police task force, she was blabbing its secrets to criminal friends. A huge secret, in fact, revealing that EncroChat, an encrypted phone system used by gangsters in many countries, had been penetrated by law enforcement agencies who were now monitoring the supposedly private underworld communications. Her snitching ended the whole operation. Yes, Natalie has been crying, but I am quite delighted because more than two years ago, in May 2021, I released an episode of The Mob Reporter fingering Natalie Motram by name as the source of the leak. And now we all know I was right. Even Natalie admits it. The Mob Reporter here with important news on exactly how a corrupt and gullible police analyst in England ruined one of the most cherished and enterprising police probes, letting thousands of gangsters, drug lords, hitmen and crooks off the hook. Let me tell you about it. For anti-organized crime police, revealing EncroChat secrets was like stealing the crown jewels. EncroChat was a high-tech, seemingly impenetrable, encrypted phone system. Gangsters who bought the customized EncroChat handsets thought their communications were forever secret, anonymous, and untraceable. A special phone started spreading in Europe in 2016. After years of work, police in France managed to place a hacking tool into the servers EncroChat used, a collaboration of French and Dutch investigators that later included British police, began a highly secretive operation of monitoring millions of messages and images. It unlocked a door to a vast criminal underworld. The images you see here are from the EncroChat probes. Most of them are photos sent by one criminal to another over the system. The National Crime Agency, known as the NCA, which is Britain's version of the FBI, coordinated the UK's end of the EncroChat exploit. It was codenamed Operation Venetic, and they started drawing data from the secret hack on April 1st, 2020. It only took about three weeks for Natalie Motram to start blabbing about it. Natalie, now 24, is from Warrington, an English town halfway between Manchester and Liverpool. She joined Cheshire Police as an apprentice in 2017 and a year later was working on secondment as a civilian intelligence researcher with the Northwest Regional Organized Crime Unit. That was one of the police units sent Operation Venetic intelligence packages for analysis. And Natalie was there conducting threat assessments of organized crime groups. She was a poor choice for the job. By April 24, 2020, just weeks after the stunning data tap had been turned on, Natalie had already told criminal friends about the police penetration. Natalie was a gym rat and a modest runner. It was through a shared passion for a fitness club that she became friends with a woman 14 years older than her, named Leah Bennett. Bennett and her husband, Jonathan Kay, lived just a mile away from Natalie. She became so close to the couple, she had a key to their house. Jonathan Kay wasn't a gang boss, but he had criminal contacts. When investigators later went back to trace Natalie's movements using cell site and phone data, they learned Natalie was with Kay on April 21st, 2020, after which Kay called a man who was an accused criminal, but who cannot be named because of a court order. Three days later, Natalie and Kay were again at Kay's house. While she was there, she accessed Operation Phonetic Records on her computer. Kay then phoned the unnamed man again. That same day, officers monitoring EncroChat communications logged messages from one EncroChat account to two others, warning of the secret police penetration. Whatever else he may be accused of, the unnamed man's spelling is an atrocity. Quote, I know a lady who works for the police, one message said. This is not hearsay. Direct to me. They can access Encro software, he wrote. The guy had details too, saying investigators at that point were only using the data to intercept firearms and that their access ran 48 hours behind real time, so he suggested others set messages to self-destruct. This was the conduit for the leak. 
The leak was disastrous for police operations in several countries, but at least investigators knew pretty soon they had a mole in their midst and set off on a frantic hunt to find her. It took two months for them to close it down. When police zeroed in on Natalie, they set a trap for her and she jumped right into it. On June 12, 2020, Natalie Motram was handed a special assignment by her police bosses. She was told to analyze an intelligence log, one that involved her buddy, Jonathan Kay. She didn't know the log was fake and that she was under careful surveillance. Natalie then left work and drove to Kay's home and let herself in. She was soon joined by Kay and Bennett. Prosecutors say Natalie told him there about the intelligence logs police had on him. It triggered just the response police were watching for. At 5.26 p.m., Bennett's phone was used to call the partner of the man who can't be named, police say. It was the first time the two devices had communicated in two years. It seems that the call was to set up a face-to-face -face meeting without going through AnchorChat, because shortly afterwards, Kay and the unnamed man met at a supermarket parking lot, where they walked and talked for 20 minutes. Police soon arrested all four of them. On August 18, 2023, this was all confirmed in court. In short, I was right about Natalie. Natalie admitted misconduct in public office, perverting the course of justice, and to unauthorized access of computer material. Kay earlier admitted his guilt to perverting the course of justice. As part of the deal, once the pair is sentenced, a charge against Bennett will be dropped. Natalie is scheduled to return to court November 3rd to learn her punishment. As for the man who can't be named, he was due to be charged with perverting the course of justice too, but has since disappeared. The ramifications of it all, though, continue and are very serious. On June 12th, 2020, the day Natalie was set up with her fake assignment and she went off to warn her buddy, someone also tipped off the people running EncroChat. That evening, an emergency alert was pushed out to all EncroChat users. The alert said, They repurposed our domain to launch an attack to compromise the carbon units. We can no longer guarantee the security of your device. Users were told to immediately power off and physically destroy their device. The jig was up all over the world. It was hugely embarrassing for British police, who had been brought into the circle of trust in an international consortium. Police were suitably outraged by her breach. They called her a disgrace. Police nonetheless describe Operation Venetic as the deepest and broadest operation against organized crime that the UK has ever seen. Even though Natalie Motram ensured it was short-lived, police say it was still remarkably successful. It led to more than 1,100 convictions in the UK so far. Another 1,000 people are still before the courts. The information from encrypted chats led police to find six and a half tons of cocaine, three tons of heroin, and 14 tons of cannabis, police said. 173 guns were seized, along with 80 million pounds in cash. That's about 100 million US dollars. Now imagine what those numbers might be if it wasn't for Natalie Motrum. Please share a link to this video on social media to give it a boost. Give it a like and a comment, and please subscribe. Tap the thanks button to send me a tip. Thanks for watching.